Welcome back to Track Life. Today we're going to be installing a Koyo Rad radiator on my personal Honda S2000. So the first thing we're going to be doing is going to be removing the radiator fluid out of the vehicle. Um, obviously you want to make sure the vehicle is cool because of the fact that obviously the uh, system is pressurized when it starts heating up and you don't want to burn yourself from the scalding coolant. So we, we had the car cool overnight and now we're going to actually drain the radiator fluid. So what we're going to be doing now is we're going to open the peacock on the bottom and that will release all the radiator fluid from the radiator. As we let the radiator fluid drain out of the radiator, we're going to be removing the intake box and the intake tube so to gain access to the radiator so we can remove that. We're going to disconnect the fan from the harness. There's one. There's two, one for the radiator and one for the AC condenser. There we go. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to remove the radiator hoses on the top one first, but since the radiator is still draining, we're going to wait for the bottom one to fully drain first. Remove the overflow. And then we're going to move the two brackets that's actually holding the radiator onto the chassis or supporting the radiator onto the chassis. <laughs> Located on the bottom of the radiator is a radiator temp sensor for the fan. It obviously turns on the fan and turns off the fan as, you know, as the vehicle gets hot. So make sure you unplug that before trying to remove the radiator. And then now we're going to also remove the lower hose. Now that we have their lower radiator removed, uh, we can actually remove the radiator from the vehicle. Just carefully bring it up. And there you go. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be removing the radiator fans and the condenser fan because obviously we're going to be reusing those two items on the new radiator. So it's just 10 millimeter screws or bolts on the top and bottom. A couple of other items that we're going to be reusing, obviously, is the rubber grommets on the bottom. I'm going to transfer that to the new radiator. And also, we have to reuse the um, radiator fan temp sensor. So from the factory from Koyo, they actually installed the adapter fitting for a 2006 to 2009 radiator. And since my vehicle is a 2002 model, we're going to be removing this so we can install the new water or the old radiator temp sensor back in. Just snug it down a little bit. There we go. As you can tell by the, obviously, the thickness of the two radiator, the Koyo radiator is a 36 millimeter core design compared to the one row radiator, which probably, you know, I don't have a micrometer to measure that, but that probably looks about 14 millimeter. So probably, obviously, much thinner. And obviously, because of the fact that the Koyo radiator is 36 millimeter, it can hold a lot more coolant. So there's a much higher capacity. The main benefit, obviously, with Koyo radiators, besides the aluminum end tank, is that if you look at the factory radiator, it's actually a plastic end tank that's sealed by a rubber seal between the aluminum and the plastic. And over time, this seal can start to leak. So you need to see on your vehicle, if you start seeing coolant coming out of the radiator, that's probably time to start replacing the radiator. Also, you can tell that the Koyo radiator has a billet CNC filler cap compared to the plastic filler cap. And also, you can tell by the, the OEM radiator, you can start seeing the cracks in the filler neck or on the feed neck also. That's probably gonna start leaking very soon. So Koyo redesigned this radiator over time. And the previous generation radiator was actually 53 millimeters thick. So it was a lot thicker than this one. But because of the fact that Koyo went to new fin technology, their hypercore fin technology is a lot more dense inside. So it actually still keeps the radiator or keeps the vehicle cool, but not needing the larger core. So not only is this radiator lighter, it's also it's, it's still is as efficient as the previous generation. So what we're going to be doing now is we're going to be transferring over the radiator fan from the old radiator. So I'll just 
Obviously there are slots in here for the Raider fan. Put that on. Put the nuts on. Okay, now we're gonna install the condenser. So we're gonna place the radiator back into the vehicle. Make sure you don't damage any of the fins going in because obviously that's gonna prevent airflow from going through the radiator. So you wanna be very careful with that. So you wanna make sure it sits into the rubber grommets that is on the vehicle. So what we can do is now place the bracket back on. So now we're gonna be reinstalling the radiator hose. The install is pretty much the exact opposite of the removal. So I'm just gonna put this hose back on. And then tighten the hose clamp. Put the radiator overflow hose back on. That just splattered me. So first we're gonna install the radiator temp sensor. And it's basically just a clip. And make sure you hear it click also to know that it's actually on. It's not clicking. There you go. <laughs> and now we're gonna install the radiator hose. Now that the radiator hose is back on, we're gonna finish installing the intake box and then all we have to do is fill up the radiator with coolant. Now we're gonna be refilling the cooling system. Uh, there are two ways to doing this. Um, the first way is the more budget friendly way, I guess you could say, is you could use a funnel. Uh, this funnel you could purchase probably from most parts store for like about $20. What you do is you fill the cooling system up to the rim or up to the, probably midway between the, the funnel and then you have to open the bleed screws. There are two bleed screws on this vehicle, one right here on the intake manifold and one on the back of the firewall. And you, what you want to do is you want to make sure those bleed screws are open and coolant's actually coming out of the system because if you don't do that, there's actually going to be air in the system and that can actually cause problems for the vehicle overheating. So make sure you fill it up, open two bleed screws once cooling coolant is starting coming out of the two bleed screws, you close it back in and then um, finish filling the system and start the car. The other way we're going to be doing is using this. This is basically a vacuum pump and what you do is you use compressed air to remove all the air out of the system and when you do that it actually creates a vacuum in the entire system and re you can not only vacuum the system, you also can refill the system and this has worked wonders for me. Um, it's really good on vehicle that are mid-engine that has radiators in the front, because obviously there's a lot of cooling pipe and cooling um, hoses, and I use this primarily. This, obviously, this system costs quite a bit more, I think, with roughly $300 for this, so. Not the most budget-friendly usage, but it actually works a lot better, in my opinion. So we're gonna be using this one, but I wanted to show you guys this system, which anybody could afford for $20. We're gonna vacuum the cooling system using compressed air and a tool. Now that the system is fully vacuumed, you can see the radiator hose is fully collapsed. There's actually negative pressure right now. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna open the valve for the fill tube and you'll see coolant start going back into the system. Now with the radiator fluid back into the radiator, we can start the car. And the purpose of that is to make sure the radiator fan turns on. 